from Washington, this is VOA News. Coming up, talks with the Taliban might be off for now. A call for nuclear weapons reductions. Hello everyone, I am Steve Norman. Afghan President Amig Karzai says his government will not participate in peace talks with the Taliban until the process is Afghan-led. He commented Wednesday after the U.S. announced it will begin talks with the Taliban on Thursday. The talks in Doha are a bid to establish a framework for ending the war in Afghanistan. Earlier, the Afghan government said it was suspending negotiations with the U.S. on a security arrangement because of the dispute over the proposed U.S. talks with the Taliban. Former Assistant Secretary of State for South Asia, Carl Indeferth, is skeptical as to the success for the U.S.-Taliban talks. The Taliban have uh, one goal in mind, which is to uh, have full power in Afghanistan, and I don't think that they have any interest in sharing power with um, the Karzai government or becoming a part of a political movement and contesting elections. I, I, I've not seen that in their, uh, in their past negotiating performance, and I don't see any reason to believe that that's going to change. Former Assistant Secretary of State for South Asia, Carl Indeferth. Turkey's Deputy Prime Minister, Bouyat Arinj, says he does not object to the silent anti-government protests that have sprung up across the country. Anti-government demonstrations over the past month had, until recent days, been marked by unrest between protesters and police. Marches that began three weeks ago against plans to destroy public park in Istanbul grew into protest against Prime Minister Recep Tayyip Erdogan. President Obama set forth his vision, his vision that is, for advancing toward a world free of nuclear weapons happened in a speech Wednesday at the Brandenburg Gate in Berlin. Today I'm announcing additional steps forward. After a comprehensive review, I've determined that we can ensure the security of America and our allies and maintain a strong and credible strategic deterrent while reducing our deployed strategic nuclear weapons by up to one-third. And I intend to seek negotiated cuts with Russia to move beyond Cold War nuclear postures. President Obama said that the cuts in nuclear weapons can be made while at the same time ensuring the security of the United States and its allies and maintaining a strong and credible strategic deterrent. U.S. Central Bank Chairman Ben Bernanke says the bank may ease back on efforts to stimulate the economy later this year because the economy is growing moderately. Job gains, along with the strengthening housing market, have in turn contributed to increases in consumer confidence and supported household spending. Well, Mr. Bernanke said the jobless rate is still too high, so the bank will continue stimulus efforts for the time being. In 2008, the Fed cut short-term interest rates to a record low to boost the economy during the financial crisis. When that produced disappointing results, the central bank added a program intended to push down long-term interest rates. New study finds that the poorest children in the world, most impoverished communities, are twice as likely to contract malaria. Sayla Hennessy has our report. Researchers say the study, led by Britain's Durham University and the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, suggests that alleviating poverty could protect children from malaria. Durham University professor Steve Lindsay led the research. He says that the study highlights a possible new approach to tackling the often fatal mosquito-borne disease. What's novel about this is thinking about malaria not just through getting bed nets out or better medicines, but we can actually improve or reduce malaria by assisting development in these communities. The research is based on an analysis of nearly 5,000 English language studies published over the past three decades. Sayla Hennessy for VOA News, 
London. And the results of the study were published in the medical journal Lancet. United Nations Refugee Agency says more people in 2012 became refugees or internally displaced people than at any time in history since 1994. UNHCR's annual Global Trends report said more than 45.2 million people were displaced in 2012 compared to 42.5 million in 2011. Antonio Guterres, head of the UNHCR, says the numbers reflect individual suffering on a huge scale. For more on that story and the rest of the hour's news, check out our website. You can go to voanews.com. I'm Steve Norman, VOA News in Washington.